In this session, I'd like to illustrate the closed tray impression coping at implant level. In most cases, they come back, especially in the posterior, the closed tray is the preferred method for taking an impression. Most typically, the patient will present with a healing abutment in place, such as this. In the Nobel BioCare product line, everything is color coded, so for this case, we have yellow componentry because it's a regular platform. This is the tri-channel connection we're showing here today. So you would simply remove the healing abutment using the Unigrip driver. As you know from watching other videos, this shaft can be pulled out and replaced with a shorter shaft when in the posterior to allow the components to fit. So simply remove the healing abutment and put off to the side. It's also a good idea to put those cotton squares back in the, back the patient's mouth to prevent any swallowing of components. Once removed, you can see directly into the, the implant there. We'll take our impression coping and seat it. We're pushing down and turning until the main component will not turn and then we'll simply tighten the top of the screw by hand. Several turns and then snug it up with the Unigrip driver just about a quarter turn and ready to go. While we're on the topic here, these healing abutments that we make, some are straight and some are flared in diameter, depending on what the doctor's wish are for maintaining soft tissue. When choosing an impression coping, you want to have the same diameter impression coping as is the healing abutment, if possible. You can always use a narrower impression coping but if you try to use a wider healing, uh, wider impression coping that's wider than the healing bubble, you will definitely make the patient uncomfortable and it may prevent accurate seating. I recommend taking a radiograph to confirm that you're seated. This way you can ensure that you're going to have a good accurate case without any hiccups. You should not see any gap between the top of the implant and the impression coping bottom. At this point now, we'll begin by utilizing a, a bit of light body impression material and just go around the coping completely covering might also just make sure that you have some of the adjacent teeth I'm just trying to make sure we're capping, capturing all the nuances of the geometry of the coping and it also helps us pick up some soft tissue relation. Okay. After that, we're going to make sure that we are using a full arch tray. Full arch tray, you can use a stock tray, and it works pretty well. But you definitely want to make sure that you're not just trying to get away with a quarter tray or a little triple tray because you will not get as accurate an impression. So fill up your tray completely, do not scrimp on material. As you can see here, you want to make sure the tray is pretty full and all the way through the arch. Better to do this one time and make sure you get it right. At this point now, simply seat the tray. Making sure that it's seated properly. And then a few minutes of setup time. While we're waiting for the last bit of time for this to set up, let's discuss the benefit of taking an implant level impression. By taking an implant level impression by either utilizing a closed tray or open tray technique, you now are opening up basically every possibility for what the laboratory can do in processing the final abutment. You can still use any type of a stock abutment or a customizable titanium, zirconium, or a CAD CAM solution with this method. If you take the implant level impression 
you have many, many choices. If you go to the abutment level impression technique where the surgeon or you have already placed a basically stock abutment, you're basically stuck with that unless you want to go back and retrofit later. All right, our impression should be ready. Once this is set, we simply remove the tray. And as you can see, the component is still in its original place. What we've done is created a void in the impression material here. So when we unscrew the impression coping, we can put it exactly in place where it was because there is now a specific geometry associated with the component. In the open tray method, as we did earlier, see that the component is captured actually in the material here. Slightly different here. So at this point, with our Unigrip driver, we would remove the impression coping. You can go several turns just to get started and then finish by hand if you'd like. Remove it and replace the healing abutment. And just tighten that snugly as you can by hand. Make it snug. Shade, bite, and send everything to the laboratory. At this point, if you'd like, you can actually take the implant replica and attach the two components, the impression coping and the replica together. And while looking into the void that is made, put it back in its exact place. You'll feel it have a definite positive seat when it's in the right spot. Many times doctors will just send it to laboratories because the laboratory will take it out and check it to make sure that it's been seated properly. That's the closed tray impression technique. I hope that helps you.